What's going on guys and welcome back to Pete's Carport. On this episode we're going to be changing out the headlight switch for a 95W140. Uh, probably very similar to many of the W140s. Uh, it is a video that I had to do from scratch. As you can see I've already got a lot of it apart. I could not find any videos even showing how to remove this exact type of switch. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with it put together and show you how I got it apart. Alrighty guys, so let's first talk about what the issue might be. So internally in your light switch, um, there can be some broken gears and what that's going to do is you're going to hear, it's going to feel kind of funky, you're going to hear like more of a crunching noise when you're turning and you're not going to be able to click it into each one of these positions here and your lights are going to act very sporadic like mine were doing where you might be able to get the headlights on but you can't get the tail lights on uh, which was not allowing me to drive my car at night because I could never get it to fully function. I couldn't get it set into the position. So uh, let me show you what you're gonna need to do this. It's really not that difficult of a job. I could not find a video like I said earlier. I was able to find some forums with some instructional things that kind of allowed me to figure this out. Uh, but the first thing is obviously your replacement part. I picked mine up um, online at Advanced Auto with a 25% discount. I'll put a link in there. I think it was under 30 bucks and it has a one year warranty. Uh, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver to take out your Phillips head screws, a small flathead screwdriver, and that's going to allow us to uh, pop open the light switch. I'll explain that to you later. You don't necessarily need a trim removal tool, but sometimes that helps when prying open things and not damaging them. And then you want to go ahead and get yourself an adjustable wrench or some adjustable pliers. And uh, does not need to be um, a socket wrench or anything like that. You can easily get them with this. It's not something that's hard uh, tight on or it needs to be tightened up tight so uh, let's first do the thing that we need to do first which since we're working with electrical go into your trunk uh, pull back your trunk liner uh, access your battery and remove your negative cable keep in mind when you do this you are going to need to reset your radio so you want to make sure you have that security code if you don't send me a message I can show you how to access a site where you can get your radio code because um, that's very important. You don't want your radio not to be able to work when you get your battery back on there and you don't want to have to pay Mercedes to reprogram it for you. The second thing that's going to happen is you might need to reprogram your power window. So any of those things that happen and that's just basically where uh, your, um, your auto up and down might not function until you reset them, recalibrate them. So let's go ahead and get that negative battery cable off. We're gonna get inside the car and we're gonna start working on it. All right, so I have already went ahead and removed all the screws, uh, but I placed everything back in so you can see how it's gonna look when you go through this. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna access um, a screw right here. And when you pull this, um, which is your adjuster, you're gonna be able to pull that out once you get that screw out. And then up in there, you're gonna see there's another screw there. Um, there's one more down there. Okay, so you wanna set those off to the side and then you'll be able to pull this out. You're gonna pull your parking brake out and if you look down below, there's gonna be two Phillips head screws down there. Okay, and then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is, uh, I did break, or, or mine was already broken prior to doing this, so uh, you want to remove, using a trim remover tool, pull up your speaker cover and you'll be able to access two screws on your vent. And then once those screws are off, you're going to be able to pop your vent right out like that. And what that's going to do is allow you to access your light switch from up here, which makes it a lot easier to take out. Um, so now this is the part where I got stuck. Once you have all those screws out, this will not come off. And you're going to pull on it, pull on it, pull on it. Uh, I thought I had to remove the wood trim here, which you do not need to do. And I found on a forum where if you look right up underneath this switch, there's a little place to pop, oh, see mine's already off, to pop a screwdriver in. And you're gonna push a flathead screwdriver in while pulling, and that's gonna pop right off. Now, once that is off, you're going to be able to access this nut here. And this is where you're gonna use your open end wrench or your uh, adjustable plier and basically just loosen up a little bit with the, that tool 
and then you'll be able to take off with your hand. Be careful, there is a light on the end of this. My new switch did not come with a new light. Now, once you remove that, you're going to be able to easily pull this out, okay, and pull it down. And you can leave it hanging there. Now, this is also going to free up the part that we're going to be changing. So now you can access it from the upper part and you're just going to turn it, as you can see there, it snaps down in, turn it and pull it back. Now be very careful. Um, some of the tutorials that were online said didn't even have to remove this part here, but you really need to remove that to get this out. So now that's gonna allow us to pull our part out, which has enough cable on it to pull out. And then you're going to pull off this front piece. I don't think I can get it with one hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that off and show you what it looks like and how we replace the one that we just bought. Okay, now we've got the old part, which is this one here, the black one, and the new part, which is gray. Obviously color does not matter. These do line up and match up. Um, when I flip it over here, you'll see I have the light now in the new part. Very simply, you just pull the bulb up. It does not need to be twisted or turned. Pull it straight up and now you can pop it in obviously if it's blown which I'm not sure in my case I'm gonna have to uh, check that you're gonna want to replace it um, obviously I can replace this afterwards uh, but that is that now I'm gonna show you how you you have guides here on both of them and on the black one they're little plastic black prongs one there and one on the other side and on the gray one they obviously made them gray so you have a prong there and a prong there you're gonna be able to line that up. If we go over to our car, you're going to be able to line that up with the little holes here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead um, and get that lined up. And there's only one way you're gonna be able to get this to slide in. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay guys, so now that we've got our new plug plug backed in, um, I did go and put my battery back on so I'm able to test it and I put this switch back on which we will have to use the screwdriver to take off but you're gonna see here if I twist it to the on position you can see everything is functioning and it's nice and stiff I can turn it off so I'm gonna go ahead and take this cap off we're gonna slide this piece back in here notch it in we're gonna go ahead and put our get this off I was put our nut back on tighten it up in there uh, with this piece back up in and then we're going to put our screws back on. I'm going to show you what the final uh, looks like and how it functions. Alrighty guys, so I've got everything back together. Um, I am uh, gluing a piece that cracked in the, um, the vent here so that's why that's not back in but this is all back in. Screws are all back in. Um, you know, you've got the two behind here. This slides in. The one thing that I had an issue with that I'm going to point out is uh, the bracket that the screw goes into um, it's kind of like a washer, like a self-tapping washer. It was sliding around, so it was very difficult to get that lined up. It took me like 10 minutes and finally got it in. But that was it. I mean, outside of that, this is a 15-minute job. Um, and then now we got to just test it. So you're going to go to the first click. And what that should do is give you your rear lights for when you're driving in the dark. But should not give you your front headlights, only your corners. And as you can see, only the corners. And then we're going to come back around. And we're going to do our full click open. And what that's going to do then is just turn on the headlights. And that's all I'm really concerned with right now. I already checked the other ones. And you can see I've got those um, Walmart LEDs in there. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I was planning on doing an update video. They're not that bright. I'm guessing the lumens are very low like some of you guys had commented. But they do look very nice driving at night. I've uh, actually been in a different car and saw them and, and they look awesome. So the looks are great. You can definitely be seen in traffic. They don't blind anybody, but they do not light the road up as well as the stock ones. So that's going to end this video. Hopefully this helps you guys out because I could not find anything on this online. I found a couple other different chassis that were completely different type switches. And the main thing was putting the screwdriver up into that switch, able to pop that off so then you can access the bolt. So hopefully this helps you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for tuning in. Lots more to come with the W140. I did get some uh, new front tires on here, well new used, just to get me through 
um, for right now because one of them was uh, starting to peel. But outside of that, you will see every video on these updates. Have a great day. This is Pete's Cardboard.